Welcome to the EXP Group's discussion of SEMA paper P2, Performance Management. Today we want to spend a little time to look at cost analysis uh, techniques uh, under the general heading of cost planning and analysis. And the first uh, uh, concept we would look at is the just-in-time uh, system, which was popularized in Japan some decades ago. Um, it started really as a uh, an effort to minimize inventories and to order more frequently smaller levels of inventories that would be introduced into the production process on a uh, continuing basis. In other words, the idea was to um, keep very lean uh, inventories and to produce uh, and to absorb into the production inventories as and when needed. However, this uh, whole just-in-time philosophy has grown into more than just an inventory management model and now has become the basis of a whole concept uh, which is called, uh, can be referred to as lean manufacturing. It's also consistent with the idea of total quality management where there's a desire to uh, eliminate waste and to reduce costs through um, getting the involvement of uh, everybody in the workforce to delegate competences right down to the most basic levels and if people see um, defects occurring on the production line for example to be able to take action to stop everything until the things are fixed so getting it right the first time uh, it's connected to the idea that there is a, a constant desire to achieve um, improvements in quality on a continuing incremental basis at the company. Then uh, another concept we need to know about is the theory of constraints and this is also connected to uh, an optimization of uh, production in which um, bottlenecks are identified and are lifted or removed as, as production takes place. Um, bottlenecks are actually a danger to, to the system because they may have the consequence of having um, inventories pile up at a blockage point in the processing so that if department A is producing and passing on to production to department B uh, building up interim inventories which are not able to be processed by B fast enough, then a, a theory of constraints or, or an optimization process would say, okay, we need to get A, first of all, to stop producing because we want to avoid the buildup of inventories. And secondly, we want to eliminate the bottleneck, which is at B, to lift that constraint, if you will, so that B is able to process uh, items more, more quickly and, and more efficiently. The whole idea is connected to a throughput contribution, the idea of um, being able to process as much um, throughput per unit of scarce resource or per bottleneck um, as, as possible. It's a short-term profit maximization um, exercise. Kaizen uh, is another related idea to the idea of uh, to total quality management and focuses on this continuous improvement in company operations. In fact, there are uh, American organizations that are dedicated to service quality and they set goals for their staff to, to have staff achieve savings, for example, of $1 per day in the jobs that they do, which looks very, um, you know, very modest in terms of its impact on the company. But if you have a one dollar saving per day per staff member, and you multiply it by the number of days in the year, multiplied by the number of employees, then the result can be quite a significant gain in savings. And it's really connected to a mentality um, 
evolution among all employees that they be um, that they eliminate waste and that they have a conscious desire to be able to uh, optimize operations and make them more efficient. Then there's another technique uh, connected with the impact of uh, the beneficial impact of people being able to do their jobs more efficiently, uh, learning on the job, if you will, and to quantify this effect. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a product that requires 20 hours of labor per unit at a cost of $6 per hour. Now, we would, in setting up our labor standards, we would expect that if four units of the product were to be produced, it would require four times 20 or 80 hours. At a labor cost of $6 per hour, we would expect a total cost of 480 dollars. If we introduce, however, the concept of a learning curve effect into this story, uh, let's say we had a learning curve effect of 90 percent, then we would expect that as the four units are going to be produced, there's going to be a, a, a greater efficiency um, as labor climbs a learning curve, if you will, and that the four units should be completed in less time. The question is, how long should they require for four units. Here's the learning curve formula, formula, y equals a x to the power b. And the variables are defined here, the cumulative time required on a per unit basis. That's what y is telling us. Now, a times x to the b. We have to sort this out and, and analyze it and break it down. The A part is the time to produce the first unit. And in our example above 20 hours, this is basically a standard or let's say a, a, a constant number. That doesn't change because the first unit takes 20 hours to produce. The question is what happens after as we double our output to two units? Now, x is going to be the cumulative number of units produced. In our story here, we're talking about a total of four units. And so we would like to know what the learning curve effect is going to be if we have a learning curve of 90%. 90% is the learning curve which we call r. And r forms part of the superscript b, the power b. b is log r, in this case log 0.9 or 90% divided by log 2. So a little bit of mathematics are required here to be able to plug the uh, numbers that are described in the scenario into the formula. And the answer that's given to us, y is equal to 16. Okay, this is a, a result of having plugged in the numbers as described above and generating the value for y. Now, let's think about y. y is telling us the cumulative time per unit, 16 hours. That's kind of like an average time. The first unit takes 20 hours, but the cumulative time on a per unit basis for the four, four units is 16 hours. Hours. Therefore, we can say that the total time required for the four units will be 4 times 16 or 64 hours. So now we can see that the learning curve effect means that producing the four units has not resulted in a total expenditure of 80 labor hours, but in fact 64 labor hours. Let's move on to the idea of activity-based management. Again, we've, uh, in previous papers, we've been introduced to the notion of activity-based costing, ABC. And activity-based management is the idea of using ABC-type information to understand how costs are generated within a company and to be able to um, base our operational decisions, managerial decisions, with a view to uh, reducing costs and improving quality and to do all the sorts of things that we need to achieve optimized um, production 
processes. So the AVM approach to cost management, we need to understand what the activities are in the various production departments and to understand what the link is between the activities and the costs that they generate, what we call cost drivers. And with this information, we are in a position to be able to focus on managing down overhead costs. Because overhead costs are uh, difficult to um, put a finger on to understand how they're, how they're uh, generated. And in uh, modern uh, manufacturing, overhead costs have grown in terms of uh, their, their proportion of overall costs in uh, manufacturing. And if we can't measure them and identify them, then the controllability of such costs becomes difficult. This is why an ABM system facilitates the, uh, uh, our ability to be able to identify cost drivers and, as a result, be able to control, i.e. to minimize such costs.